Hello everyone. Today we're going to explore the history of Java and cover some essential Java programming basics. So let's start with a bit of history. So in 1991, a team of engineers at Sun Microsystems known as the Green Team embarked on an ambitious project. Their goal was to develop a hand -hand, an handheld controller for multiple entertainment systems. This endeavor required a new programming language that could run on various devices. Thus, Oak was born which later became known as Java. Java's versatility was demonstrated in 1995 when the Hot Java web browser, which utilized Java, was showcased at the Sun World Conference. Shortly after, Java was incorporated into Netscape, marking the beginning of its widespread adoption. And one of Java's standout features is its cross-platform compatibility, allowing it to run on various operating systems. Java programs come in two forms. Applications, which are standalone programs that run without the aid of a web browser. And they have a relaxed security model since the user runs their, their program locally. And number two, applets. Small applications that require a Java-enabled web browser to run. They have an enhanced security model as they run without the browser environment. To appreciate Java's significance, let's understand why it was developed. An algorithm is a set of well-defined steps to complete a task, which a computer needs in a machine language written using binary zeros and ones. Each CPU has its own machine language, such as a Motorola 68000 series or Intel x86 series. But in the early days, Programmers wrote in machine language, which was tedious and error prone. And assembly language simplified this, but can but was still processor dependent. There was a need for higher level programming languages like Java. And after that, there was offerings of greater ease and portability. Java programming statements known as source code are written using a text editor to, and saved with a .java file extension. A compiler translates this source code into an executable form. For Java, this means converting your source code into bytecode, which the Java Virtual Machine, or JVM, can interpret and execute. Unlike other compilers that translate source code into machine code specific to a CPU, the Java compiler translates source code into bytecode, and these bytecode files have a .class file extension. The, Java, the JVM, or the Java Virtual Machine, which emulates a microprocessor, executes these instructions, making Java an interpreted language. Portability is one of Java's key strengths. It allows a program written on one type of computer to run on various other types with little or no modifications. Java bytecode runs on the JVM, not on any particular CPU, ensuring high portability. JVM exists for many platforms, including Windows, Linux, Unix, and Mac. Most programming languages achieve portability by compiling a program for each specific CPU it will run on. Java, however, provides a JVM for each platform, eliminating the need for recompiling.
software used to write Java programs is the Java Development Kit, or JDK. And it's available in different editions. There's Java SE, which is your standard edition, Java EE, which is the enterprise edition, and Java ME, which is your micro edition. When you're compiling a Java program, it involves using the Java compiler and a command line utility. The command to compile a Java program is JVAC, J A V A C, file name.java. So, whatever the file name is, .java. For example, to compile a source code file named payroll.java, you would use the command JVAC payroll.java. Let's look at a simple, let's, let's look at a sample program. Here is a simple Java program. Public class, hello world, maybe curly bracket, public static void, main, in parentheses, string, uh, your square brackets, args, curly bracket, or sorry, parentheses, close parentheses, curly bracket, string, message equals, hello world, semicolon, system.out.print, ln print line in parentheses message semicolon curly bracket curly bracket in this program you see public class static and void are keywords keywords in java are case sensitive and must be written in lowercase keywords cannot be used as programmer programmer defined in, in identifiers An important part of learning Java is understanding its punctuation, particularly the use of semicolons. Semicolons are used to end a Java statement. However, not all lines of Java program end a statement. For example, system.out.println, print ln, uh, in parentheses message, semicolon. This is, this is one Java statement written using two lines. Do you see the difference? A statement is a complete Java instruction that causes the computer to perform an action. Data in a Java program is stored in memory and variable names represent locations in memory and variables are often called fields. Programmers create variables by assigning them programmer defined identifiers. For example, int, which stands for integer, int hours equals 40, semicolon. In this example, the variable hours is created as an integer, and we'll cover data types more um, soon, and assign the value 40. Variables are simply names given to represent places in memory. The Java virtual machine JVM actually decides where the value will be placed in memory. To summarize, we've covered the history of Java, why it was developed, its compilation process, punctuation, and an example program. Java's portability and cross-platform compatibilities have made it a staple in programming. Let's take another expression shot. Bon appetit.